We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what Mother Day, Mother's Day represents to them. Some, it may be a good thing. They have their mother in this world right now. They get to celebrate that. Some may be a little bit broken heart today because they don't have their mother anymore. There may be some here today that have been a part of a relationship and the mother relationship hasn't been that good. So today, there's so many emotions that can happen. So in the midst of all that, Lord, we need you to come into this place, fill it up, by Satan in the name of Jesus, so you can do the work that you do. Lord, speak through this man, this ordinary man, Lord. I put myself aside and I offer myself to you as that living sacrifice that you may speak through to do the work that only you can do. And Lord, whatever's done will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. <laughs> Woo! How many is here today? You here? Yeah. Everybody say, I'm here. Woo. Yeah. All right, good. I want to keep you here. I want to, I want to read. There's several scriptures I want to read. The one's just really a launching pad to get us where we need to get. Now, today I'm saying that today the message is women of God, your best days are now. Right? So, if you, the men, that doesn't mean it's just your day to take a nap. Lord, and you don't get to sit back and not listen today. I need you to listen, you know, just maybe to help them remember. But also, this message really, it can really be applied to you. you can, I can almost name this women and men of God. Today is your moment. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. All right? So, we're going to look. So, don't, don't, men, don't, don't drift away. I don't want to lose you, but I want you to be here in this moment. But look, I want you to go to John chapter 2. And it, it's kind of an odd scripture for a Mother's Day message, and even for the launch that I want to do. But here we are. We're at a wedding, and this is Jesus and his parents, his mom's there, his disciples are there. It's, it's a very unusual event, but it's one of the events that Jesus does his first miracle that we have recorded in the Word of God. So they, they're there. And unfortunately, for the host, they run out of wine. There's no wine. And that's a, that is not a good thing in that day when they were having a wedding. You just didn't do that. You, probably, you tried to plan to make sure you had all you did. So Jesus, Jesus' mom comes to him and says, do something about it, right? So when mom tells you to do something about it, what do you do? You do it because mom said to do it, right? So you do it, whatever it is. And he says, hey, he looks at the servants and he says, get these jars, right? Now, when you look in the scripture and you see jars, it's not like what you're thinking. We're talking 20, 30 gallon jars. That's how big they are. And he says to the servants, put water in these jars. And the servants did exactly what Jesus said. They put water in the jars. And then he says, go serve the, the host, the master. Go serve them right now and give them out of this water, this jar. Start giving them wine. And sure enough, they did it. So they dipped into this water and they would give it to the host. And let me tell you what, he was amazed. He's like, wow. Matter of fact, I have the scripture here. I just want to read it to you. It says this. Then he told them. Now draw out and take it to the master of the banquet. And they did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He didn't realize where it had come from, though the servants knew, because they're the ones that put the water in there. Then he talked to the bridegroom aside and said this, Everyone brings out the choice wine from first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. You have saved the best... And I used to think all the time it said, you saved the best to last. But that's really not what it says. And it may not seem that big of a difference, but the Bible says you have saved the best till now. It's a big difference because right now, and I want to launch from that, and I'm not going to build on that particular passage, but I want to launch on that because today is the day, right now is the best days of your life. No matter what you're doing, no matter who you are, it doesn't matter what circumstance you're in, right now is the best day of your life. So I'm going to give you three things real quick. How do we live in the moment? Because the moment is important. Right? The moment is important. So how do we make sure that we as individuals, how do we make sure we're always living in the moment? Because right? we don't want life to pass us by and miss it. 
We don't want to just all of a sudden look up and all of a sudden most of our life has slipped right past us and we can't do anything about it because it's done gone, right? And you're like, man, what did I do? Why didn't I take advantage of that, right? So here's the key and it's so important. What am I going to do to make sure that today is the moment in my life that God has given me? This is the day that the Lord has made. How am I going to rejoice in it? What am I going to do about the moment right now? So here's number one, and it's really simple, just be fully present. And if there's anybody that understood this more than anybody else, it was Jesus. He was always fully present in everything he did. And I'm going to look at Luke chapter 18 and 19, at the end of 18, the first of 19, there's these cool back-to-back -back stories. And you see Jesus at work. So here's what happened. I'm just going to tell you that if you want to go back and read it, I want you to do that. Like I said, it's at the end of chapter 8, very first of chapter 19. Two different stories, but they're in the same, same sort of city. So the Bible says that Jesus is going, he's walking, he's going from city to city, and he has his disciples with him, and he's getting to the city of Jericho. Right? And he's right there on the edge of it, ready to go through the gates to go into the city. And outside the city gate is a man. Now, Luke don't tell you who it is, but Mark tells you that's Barnum, Barnabas. It's sitting there. He's blind. He needs help. He needs, he, needs, he needs to be healed. So he cries out, Son of David. Now, remember... It's crazy. There's people everywhere. Jericho's a big city. There's people following Jesus, not just his disciples, but there's groups of people following him. There's, it's just chaotic. But in the midst of all this, one of this, this man is blind, calls out to Jesus, Lord, Jesus, son of David, help me. And Jesus said this, if you look at it in chapter 18, he says, what do you want me to do? Right there in the moment, he stops. There's a moment Right there, it's present. Jesus is present. There's something that needs to be done. He's not getting caught up in the everyday fast pace. He stops and says, hey, what do you need me to do? And we find that he wants to be healed. And what does Jesus do? He stopped in the midst of this crazy, crazy moment. As it just passes by him. He just passes there. But Jesus stops in the middle of that moment and he heals the man. Isn't that awesome? Say, that's awesome. So we see him, a very poor man. The reason he's sitting outside the gate because he is poor. And he just was a, it was a bad situation. So Jesus heals this poor man. And he walks through the gates. And he's walking through. And it's crazy. This is in Luke 19. Again, people are everywhere. And there's a man there, Cindy, that wants to see Jesus. But he's a little bit high challenge. Right? Kind of like me. So if you want to picture this man, picture me. So his name is Zacchaeus. Right? If you don't know who Zacchaeus is, I can tell you. It's him. This is him. I'm going to tell you. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up in a sycamore tree. Why? So the Lord he wanted to see. I'm telling you, I'm rhyming today. I'm going to start rapping in a minute. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, he looks up and sees Zacchaeus in the tree. Now, remember, let me tell you who Zacchaeus was. He wasn't like a poor man. He was a rich man. But he had a bad problem, and his problem was he was a tax collector. Now, you may say, well, that's not too bad today, even though we may not allow paying our taxes, right? But we, back then, it was at the bottom. You were a no-good, sorry dog. Because what would happen, the Roman government wanted their taxes, and so they would, they would do the taxes, but then they would tax them on, and they would be able to take some of that money. So most of them were hated. So it's kind of interesting that we serve a Savior of God. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're at the bottom or if you're at the top. It doesn't matter if you're hurting or not hurting. It doesn't matter who you are. He takes the time to stop in that moment when he sees you in the need and he tries to help you. Can I get an amen? It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor. It doesn't matter. Jesus stops in the midst of the moment. And the great thing is, he looks up in that tree and he sees Zacchaeus. And what's neat is he calls him by name. Zacchaeus, come down. 
We're going to go to your house and we're going to have lunch together. Let me tell you what, that ain't kind of need that God loves you so much that he knows you by name. How many times in the Bible does he say, hey, Lazarus, rise up because he knew him by name. How often you see him in the garden, he called out and said, Mary, here I am. And let me tell you what, when I was lost and I was busted, when I needed help and I needed a Savior, God knew my name and said, Delbert, here I am. And all I had to do was reach out. Somebody say amen. That's the kind of God we serve. Woo! I'm glad we have a God that can stop in the midst of the chaos in my moment. If I can slow down enough like Jesus, I can get caught up in that moment. But sometimes we don't. Sometimes we're so, so, so crazy busy. And our life is busy. Can I get an amen? amen? Man, I love that scripture where it says today, this moment, right now, that's what he said to Zacchaeus. He went home with him and he said, man, Zacchaeus, I see what you're doing. Because Zacchaeus was so excited. He said, I'm going to pay back four times what I've taken. I'm going to return what I've, what I've done. I want to make the bad good. And then Jesus said to him, today, today, salvation has come to you and your home. How many of you are living in the present? Right now. This is your moment. Today is the day that God has made for you. What are you doing about the moment that you're in? Now, I remember when Noah was growing up. Man, it was crazy because, you know, how many of your kids have a bunch of toys? Just raise your hand. And where are the toys usually lined up? In the floor, everywhere, right? So I'd come home from work, Renee was taking care of Noah, man, he'd spread toys everywhere, you know, it's like walking through a mine. And the bad thing is, try to do it in the dark. It don't work, you know, you're going to step on something, so I'm always thinking, man, I just want to come home one day, and the, there's no toys anywhere, I like to walk in the house and walk through, and then all of a sudden, Noah goes off to college, and boom, there ain't no toys, and you know what I'm wishing? I wish there were some toys there. Boom, just like that it was gone. Boom, just like that. Boom, it's over. How many of you that came in with kids this morning and maybe you're holding your baby? I'm going to tell you, some people in this church can tell you right now they're babies, but the next thing you know, they're going to go off to college like some of our kids are doing right now. They'll be gone. And the moment, the moment will be gone. It'll be past. It'll be gone. And sometimes we don't live in the moment. We don't live in the present. And before you know it, it's going to slip past you. The bad thing is, some of that you can't get back. Most of it you can. So I'm always saying, people, live in the present. Live in the present. That's what living in the moment's about. Is know that right now in the present, this is the day that God has made. I'm going to be Rejoice it, and I'm going to be glad in it because this is the day that God has given me, and I am going to do this. Number two, be fully engaged. Be fully engaged. So you're present now, and you realize you're present, and you know you need to do something in this moment. Don't just take it. Don't just look at it. Take advantage of it. Be engaged. I was reading this study, and this is crazy. It's Harvard, so it must be kind of good. Amen. I mean, ain't that where the smart people go, right? Harvard University did a study over several, several, several years. And here's what they found. 40%, 47% of the time, people's minds are not in the same place as their feet. Can, amen? Did you hear me? Almost half. Almost half of the time you're sitting in a conversation, almost half the time you're on the phone with someone, almost half the time when you're with your kids, almost half the time when you're in your, with your grandkids or with your spouse, half the time you're in that moment, you're not there. You're somewhere else. You're thinking about something else. The what ifs of life. What then of the life. I mean, your mind is somewhere else. You're not in the moment. That's what that study says. Half the time you're not in there. Your feet are there, but you're not there. Isn't that crazy? Man, I couldn't believe that when I read that. But I thought, you know, sometimes I can be like that. Let me give you another example. I don't know. Uh, I think I've asked this question before. Let me see if it's here. Oh, here. I brought my, got my thing here. Well, here's my good example. 
another study has been done. How many of y'all have one of these? Raise your hand. You know, I know if you have it right now and you're looking at it, it's probably got the Bible on it. Amen? Amen? Right. Here's the study, and it's crazy. I couldn't believe this. You know, they say, the studies show, guess how many times a person touches their phone every day? Can you know what it is? How many times a, the, the average person touches their phone a day? It is 2,617 times. Everybody go, wow. The average person, the average person touches their phone 2,617 times. You know what the top 10% is? 5,400. Everybody go, wow. You touch your phone that many times, I'm telling you, your attention's not. I've seen, I've been in meetings, it's crazy. I've been in meetings. Right? And somebody, their phone will answer, and we're in a meeting. And guess what they do? They answer and start talking right in the meeting. It is crazy. It's crazy. And I'm telling you, it's because a lot of times we're all trying to, our mind is somewhere else. We're not in the moment. You know, if it's not the phone, right, and if it's not our attention, you know what we're doing a lot of times? We're playing games. You know what it is? We're playing these games not with our phone, but with our mind. The what then game? Right? What then? Right? If I do this right now, right? what if I do this right now in my life, then this is going to happen. Right? The what then game. It's just kind of crazy, right? I always thought, man, it's so amazing, and I never thought this would happen. I mean, I always thought, man, when I reached I had to get to 30 years. I just tried my best to get to 30 years. I knew I'd cross that retirement, and at that point any time I could retire, right? I knew that, man, nothing could happen. Man, I could just, I could go in and say, I'm out of here, and I know I could retire. That's just the system that I'm in. So this January, I crossed it, and it was so surreal. I crossed the 30 mile, and all I can think about is just when I cross over, when I cross over, when I cross over. I always think, man, if I could just get here, if I could get here, and then I got here, and I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> it's crazy. I see you spitting. It's like you get your freshman in school, and all you want to do is thinking about graduating from high school. You graduate from high school to go to college. What are you thinking about, man? If I can just get out of high school, man. If I can get out of college and graduate from college, you graduate from college. What do you do, man? If I can just get a good job, you get a good job. Then you're thinking about me, man. Like, well, you want to have a family and a kids, and that's what you think. I gotta get a family, gotta get kids, right? You get family and kids, and you keep thinking, man, if I can just get these kids out of the house. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and then we get them out of the house and we're like, man, if I could just get to retirement, man, that would be awesome. You get to retirement and then you look back on your life and all you can is trying to get to something and you're not in the moment. Isn't that crazy? We, we keep wishing we could do something. When, when I get there, then I'm going to do this. When I get there, or it's the what if, you know? We play the what if game in our head. What if? If this happens, what if I do this? What if I do this? If I do this, right? And your mind, you keep running it through your head, and you're not in the moment because you're worried about the what's and the ifs. You do that, and life just goes by you. And before you know it, you look back and you wonder, what in, where did my life go? And then you're stuck with a whole nother, what if I'd have done this if I'd have only done that? If I would have spent more time here, if I would have spent more time there, if I would have reached out when God told me to reach out, if I would have loved when I was supposed to love, and it's because in that moment we didn't do it. And God's saying to us, today is the day that the Lord has made. Look around you. Look at the people that are in your presence right now. They are there. They're looking at you with those beautiful eyes and they're saying, love me. They're saying, acknowledge me. They're saying, affirm me. And you just run that path because you're trying to get somewhere else and God puts you in the moment right then to do something. Why do we do that? Again, I love that scripture that says, this is the day. There's another one in Matthew chapter 6 that says, therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. 
We're doing that. And the Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow. Why? Because tomorrow takes care of itself. And it's not saying, it didn't say don't plan tomorrow. Don't plan for tomorrow. Right? It didn't say that. What does it say? Don't worry about tomorrow. Now you're supposed to plan. There's nothing wrong with planning. But don't worry about it because today is the day that God has given you. You need to work through today. Let me give you one more thing and then I'll be done. Is it warm in here or is it just me? <laughs> well, I, I, all right. We're going to keep it just like it is. Let me give you a scripture. Fully committed. All right. So number one is what? Be fully what? Present. Present. And anyone is what? Be fully? Be fully committed. Let me read a scripture to you. All right. This is out of James chapter 4. James chapter 4, you got your Bible? I need, I need you to see this, right? You got it up on the screen, right? Here it is. Oh, I'll read it up here. What? It's what God's going to say about your life. Come now, you who say, today and tomorrow, we're going to such and such town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. You do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? Or is one? What? What? Life is what? Faith. Yes. Give us a little while. And then what? Go. God gave me this idea. So I, oh, everybody say thank you, Mary Lynn. Thank you. You brought this for us and thank you. Everybody know what this is? It, this is literally an hourglass. <laughs> you know, they have those two-minute ones like you play the game. This is literally an hourglass. What's so amazing? This thing scared me to death. Isn't that weird? Right? And what's so amazing, I've always noticed three things about these things. Like, knowing the scripture that your life is but a vapor, just a mist, boom, it's here, and then it's gone. That's quick. Now, think about this. And the thing is, you just don't know really what... At the top part, you just don't know how much is there. You never know. And that's the thing about life. You just don't know. You may think you're going to live forever, and all of a sudden, you're not. Johnny and I were talking about that this morning. It just, boom, just like that. We don't know. Today is the day. You don't know. The next thing I learned, I noticed about this crazy thing is it never stops. Woo! It just keeps going. Yep, look at it. It's just, just passing by. Dude, that's life. Never slows down. Yeah, is anybody, is life never slowing down for you? As no. you get older, what do they say? Life what? It goes faster. Yeah. It just does. Man, I just got in, I just crossed over into January, and then they told me this morning is May. <laughs> like, what? Where, where did it go? I mean, five months is gone. It's crazy. Four months? Is that fast? What I notice about the hourglass, just keep rolling. Here's the other thing I learned is this at the bottom, this here, you can't ever put it up here. Oh, you can turn it over, I know. But once it's down here, it's down here. Yep, no removal. You can't take it and put it back up. That part's gone. And some of you today need to realize that your wine is but a vapor. It's a mess. God's given you a thing called life, and it's a gift. He has gifted you with today. That's why he said, today is the day the Lord has made. He didn't say, today is the week that the Lord has made. Now get out and live the week. He says, today is the day. This is your day. Right now, this is what you have. I'm just trying to convince you today to be careful. Be wise. Because let me tell you what, life will swing past you and all you have when you look back is regrets. And that's no way to live. Man, to live with regret, to live with shame. Man, they say death is the toughest thing. Sometimes shame can be just as bad. It can be hard. And man, the last thing I want to do is look back on my life and think about the things I didn't do. I want to think about the times that I've spent with Renee. And I want to spend the time. I want to think about the times that I've spent with my son Noah. Man, I just, 
It's so neat right now, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't know, maybe I'm just homesick with Bruno or whatever, but it's kind of cool. Now, the, there's a point, he's got something going on in his life, so every day about noon, he's driving. He's driving from the place he's at now to his, to his job. So for that 40, that 30 minutes, man, we're on the phone talking every single day. So I now I have my lunch designed around that, right? So when he calls, man, we're talking. And let me tell you what, I cherish it. When they're gone, they're gone. When you get it, you grab it. Can I get an amen? May God has gifted some of you. Listen to me. Look up here. I'm about done. I think I'm going to get to the trails on that. <laughs> Man, God has gifted you, every single person in this room, God has gifted you. You got kids, you got grandkids, you got things going on in your life. Some of you need to stop worrying about the future. And quit looking to the past. Let God forgive you for the past, and then give God the future. And they say, God, I don't know what's happening up there, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. You don't know. Some of you just getting out of college or just going into college. It's tough because you're worried about what's going to happen. Some of you just grad been graduating this week. And let me tell you why that's tough. Because you're about to graduate and you're trying to make a decision. Like Your whole world's just changed. You flip, boom. You lose a parent and your whole world changes. It, it changes. You gotta flip it, right? So I'm asking you today, and I don't know who you are, to know, man, God has given you life. He's given that to you. This is your life, right here. It's just ticking away. It just keeps moving. It never stops. At point, at some point, it's all gonna be going. Everything up here is going to be right here. Boom, it's done. It's all gone. So I'm asking today, where are you living? I hope you're taking advantage of this top floor. Because you don't really know how much is up there. You just don't know. But I know one thing I know God has given me today. And today is the day who made? The Lord. The Lord's made it. He's made today for me. He's given it to me. What am I going to do with it? I'm going to be worried about tomorrow? No. Today, what I'm doing, I'm living in the moment. Because I know it's slowly, slowly, slowly fading away. Wow. So let me ask you. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. Lord, I think it's great how you lived in the moment. I think it's awesome how you always, even on the cross, even on the cross, Lord, you're sitting there dying. You're now to the cross. It is. You're within hours of your life in me. And here's a guy next to you saying, Lord, please, Lord, remember me. And Lord, in the midst of the pain, and in the midst of the rejection and the hurt, Lord, you stop in that moment and say to him, I will remember you in paradise. Wow, Lord, if we can live our days like that. And there, there may be some here today that are so wide open in their lives, they're worried about the future. They're worried about their kids. They're worried about their grandkids. They're worried about their bills. They're worried about all the anxieties that are built up in them. It's just brought them to a place of complete chaos in their mind and their heart. They don't know what to do. And Lord, now they're almost paralyzed. God, I believe there's some here today that you're trying to say to them, man, your life is a vapor. Your life is just... Today is your day. Quit worrying about the future. Quit worrying about the past. If you made mistakes, 
God, you're just like you was with Zacchaeus. Lord, you're just like the blind man. It doesn't matter who you are. We have a God that can heal. We have a God that can just take over your life and put you in the places you need to be. He can make you see again. Lord, he can, he can do anything. And you today need to fall toward Jesus. Lean into him. Let him help you when you need to be. And with nobody looking around. No one looking around. I want to ask you a question. Maybe you're here today on this Mother's Day, and you're thinking in your mind, man, I, you have described me to a D. Man, I have been playing that what then game. I've been playing what if. I've been doing all these things, and my, I'm not where my feet are. I'm never paying attention to what's in front of me. Man, I've got beautiful things right now, and I'm, I'm worked somewhere else. And you would say today, you know, preacher, would you, would you lift me up in prayer when you pray? Because I, I need God to pray. I, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Anybody, just raise them high. Here we go. I mean, you can put them down. Lord, I, you see the hands that have gone up. We thank you, Lord, for the prayers. We thank you, Lord, that you're at the end of those prayers and you hear them. And you've seen the ones that have raised their hands. You know what? You see the one that that needs to help today to live in the moment. Lord, we pray you help them to get past those things that have really taken some of their life away. May they take ownership. May they grab that. May they pull it back in. May they realize that right now they have the moment. They can start anew. They can start doing the things they need to do. They can start loving where they need to love. They can reach out where they need to reach out. Father, may you help them to do that. And Lord, we pray that in Jesus' name. Lord, there may be some here today that's lost, don't know you. If you were to come back today, they're not even sure if they'd be going with you because they never gave their heart to you. Lord, we want to lift them to you. Today is the day of salvation. That's what he told that key is. Today is your day. Today is the day of salvation. It's all about a confession. It's all about realizing who you are. It's all about realizing that you're a sinner falling short of the glory of God and you need that sin taken care of. And that's what God does. That's his special. Yeah. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, it's really simple. You just got to admit. You got to admit all these things in your life that have turned you away from God. You got to believe that he can save you. You got to confess it. You just got to tell him, Lord, I confess those sins to you today and to believe that he can save me. So if you're here today, man, I pray that you find that salvation in your life. Thank you so much for all that you're doing, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing in your church, in this church. Thank you for the great crowd. Lord, we pray your message has been loud and clear today. And we just pray these things in the name of Jesus. I want to do one more thing before we leave here. I'm going to ask... Uh, the couple to come forward that I've asked y'all come up. They, their baby, her baby was born last Friday. So it was only about a week ago, but it's in the NIC unit. So we want to pray, amen? So we're going to have them come and we're going to ask you to gather around us. We believe that the Bible teaches that if you want to believe, bring the elders around and have them pray. We're going to pray that baby out of it. Come in and name. Blackbird. The baby's name is Blackbird. I want to pray for you. I'm going to pray for this baby already. Dear Father, we just pray right now, Lord. We believe in the power of prayer. We believe in the word. We pray for this baby. You know exactly what's going on in this new unit. Lord, we know right where that baby used to be. It needs to be with this couple right here. It needs to be in the home where they can hold it and love it. So Lord, we pray right now that whatever you want to do with that little baby's body, Lord, that you begin to kill it. Lord, even within the days, that Lord, even within the hours, Lord, you get it doing what it needs to do, that body will start doing what it's supposed to do. Lord, we're praying, believing. We don't pray just yes and we don't pray not believing. We pray believing. So right now, we want to thank you in advance for what you're about to do for right here. And we give you the praise. We praise you, Lord, for what you're about to do. And Lord, we lift these things up to you. And everybody in this room said, Amen. Amen. You got to get this man.